we need to talk about pussy hyperinflation. 70% of the women you will see on Tinder will be just like this jar of peanut butter. Women are often oblivious to their attraction towards physical attractiveness in males. Is there an attraction that's emerging among the female radicals for that totalitarian male dominance that they've chased out of the West? We could say socialist in the streets, extreme libertarian in the sheets. No curves, no nothing, just straight peanut butter jar. Stop being pathetic, thirsty losers. Decent looking guys competing for average looking girls on Tinder. There's a high chance that you're gonna meet someone who's personality disorder. If she's a seven through the app, expect a six in person. Men going their own way, or MGTOW for short, is a group online that claimed to have transcended the need for women's approval. Originally, this group had good intentions, and you can see some of them online still although most have dropped the MGTOW label due to what it has become. MGTOW was originally centered around self-help for men and focused on self-improvement without basing and revolving one's life around being in a relationship or having sex. Single most important thing in life is to be MGTOW, never trust a bitch. Nowadays, they're a part of the Manosphere. The Manosphere is a large online community of male-dominated spaces, all sharing relatively similar views on women. Groups such as the anti-SJWs, Red Pillars, Black Pillars, MGTOW, Incels, and the larger Alt-Right. Obviously they reach different conclusions and also hide behind 50 layers of irony most of the time, but we can at least agree they don't like today's feminism. For this video, I'll mainly be regarding the Manosphere as MGTOWs, but just note that I am aware that there are differences between these movements. Their views on women and Tinder are pretty much identical. Most of these movements came from Gamergate back in 2014, which was about ethics in video game journalism. There is a sort of insurgent um, move in video games uh, from a couple of wacky left-wing feminists, and these are sort of far-left, Israel-hating, socialist weirdos. Um, Hi, my name's Gokrux, and I'm a statistician focusing on bioethics in New Zealand. Science matters a lot to me, and it's really important people back up their claims with rational hypotheses. So let's look into what MGTOWs say about Tinder. 70% of the women will be shaped just like this. I would hope that everyone knows what Tinder is by now, but I'll do a brief summary. Tinder is a dating app used to meet other people for casual hookups and brief interactions. You can set up your profile with up to six pictures of yourself, and you have 1,000 characters to introduce yourself in your bio. You then get to view other people's profiles and swipe right if you're interested, left if you're not. Simple stuff, really. If two people swipe right, you match and you can now message each other. If you haven't caught on, the main thing you're going off here is how the person looks and whether or not you want to match with them. So what do MGTOWs have a problem with? The issue is that the platform is dominated by men. Women get all the power and women only use it as an ego boost or they only use it when they're bored. Women who are sixes are matching with Tyrone who's a 10. Ah! <clears throat> How'd you like my impression of a MGTOW? In the Tinder economy, the average man is a poor Honduran coffee farmer, while the average woman is the well-to-do plantation owner, who oversees the work over a chilled gin and tonic. I'd usually shrug and say, so what? You know, why do these men care so much about women's sex lives? But I'm going to run through their analysis today anyway. MGTOWs love to make sweeping generalizations of women by extracting the small sample size of them on Tinder to apply a worldwide hypothesis on all adult human females. These Tinder experiments they conduct usually follow the same premise and end up with the same results as well. They set up a fake profile with a very attractive and masculine looking man, sometimes adding a horrible description or attempting to throw off women by having zero personality. After a very short amount of time and to no one's surprise, except these guys apparently, women are attracted to handsome men I think the shock of these experiments is that women are acting out of impulse and having personal preferences for attractiveness to men. This is definitely out of the ordinary though, you know, they're almost acting like men. A broader, stronger, squarer, wider jaw often gives women a more modelesque appearance. Now unfortunately for women, they tend to get uglier a lot faster. A woman with an East Asian heritage. Ching Chong Chang, do you want to back? Incredibly sexy, incredibly hot, but she's had sex with probably millions of guys. MGTOWs will tell you this is because of hypergamy. As a, as a man, you should assume that all women are hypergamous by nature, because that is, is the nature of it. 
a woman's tendency to find the best male partner to pass on her offspring. Women are programmed to get pregnant with the best possible DNA she can find. It's simple biology. As a species, we want to propagate the best genes and women want to find the best genes that they can to you know, propagate the species. Well, this is completely wrong. I'll dedicate an entire video to hypergamy in the future. Today, I'll be focusing on the actual reason behind what's happening in these Tinder experiments. Warning, boring stuff ahead. Before I can debunk some common misconceptions, it's important we have a small background of academic knowledge on this topic. There's going to be quite a big brain dump here, but I promise we'll get into the juicy stuff right afterwards. The man on the right has a bad gonial angle. I'd like to introduce the concept of sociosexual orientation. Evolutionary personality psychologists classify men and women on sociosexual orientation between the extremes of unrestricted and restricted. Relative to sociosexually restricted individuals, sociosexually unrestricted individuals are much more likely to 1. Engage in sex at an earlier point in their relationships, 2. Engage in sex with more than one partner at a time, and 3. Be involved in sexual relationships characterized by less investment, commitment, love, and dependency. Sociosexual orientation, just like all other personality traits, is a relatively stable trait of individuals over the life course. In other words, people are either sociosexually restricted or unrestricted for most of their lives. As found in this study, men on average are more unrestricted compared to women. Men of all sexual orientations tend to possess the same sociosexual attitudes wherever they live, whether in America, Africa, Asia, or Europe. Even after controlling for differences in gender role orientation and openness to experience, most men possess relatively unrestricted sociosexual attitudes compared to women. While women across all cultures show a distinctive pattern of more restrictiveness compared to men, another study found the variance of sociosexuality orientation for women between different countries was greater than the variance between the sociosexuality for men and women. Research was conducted between 48 nations with a sample size of over 14,000 participants. I've highlighted a few key countries so we can look into what creates the variation in sociosexual orientation of women between them. Schmidt looked into what could be causing such large variations between countries for only women, while men stayed relatively unrestricted across 48 nations. According to strategic pluralism theory, women are designed to facultatively shift their mating strategies depending on certain qualities of local environment. In demanding environments that necessitate high levels of biparental care, e.g. cultures with high stress, few resources and high mortality, women are hypothesized to become more socio-sexually restricted. In non-demanding environments, women are able to expend additional effort on short-term mating, and so women's sociosexuality should increase or become more unrestricted in non-demanding environments. Societies allowing women with more freedom and access to better living conditions for biparental care, unrestrictiveness increases. Feminism and women's rights movements allow for more women to consider and partake in casual sex. To summarise the study, it was concluded that on average men are less restrictive while women are more restrictive. In layman's terms, men are much more into casual sex while women on average don't care as much and seek romantic attraction via gauging personality traits. You shouldn't even try to have sex, you should just whack it. No. But we know this to be untrue when talking about all men and all women. Some men aren't interested in casual sex, while some women definitely are. Sex is really fucking powerful stuff. This imbalance is what's reflected on Tinder. There are less women on the app because there are less unrestricted women. Before leaving the study, I'd briefly like to cover the impact of what these observations mean regarding human biology, or evolutionary theories. Schmidt notes, Even though sex differences in sociosexuality appear to be culturally universal, and in some ways sex differences are stronger than the measurable effects of culture, this does not mean that sex differences must be the result of evolved reproductive strategies. It could be that sociosexual sex differences are a byproduct of some other force that happens to permeate all human cultures, such as patriarchy, religion, or some other socio-historical influence. It could also be that sex differences in sociosexuality are the direct result of some biological differences between men and women, but the difference does not involve psychological adaptations to sociosexuality per se. What Schmidt is pointing out here is that just because there is a significant difference between the restrictiveness of men and women across all human cultures, we cannot say this is entirely biological. Underlying cultural differences for men and women can exist worldwide without being specifically evolutionary between the sexes. An example would be something like long hair. 
If we took hair length for both sexes across the same 48 nations, we can determine that there would be a significant difference for the hair length between men and women worldwide. Despite nothing in human biology requiring long hair for existence, and the fact that men can grow their hair just as long as women can, makes this observation entirely culturally significant rather than biological or evolutionarily. Let's get back on topic. To add even more to the scarcity of women, we must also consider the dangers of meeting random strangers for sex. Women have more concern with their safety regarding hookups. Help Auckland is a helpline for sexual assault survivors in my country, New Zealand. They report that one in three women are sexually assaulted by the time they turn 16, with 70% of these involving genital contact. The 16 to 24 year old age range is more than four times more likely to suffer from sexual assault than any other age group. A quick Google search for the USA and the UK showed me similar trends in both these countries, with 1 in 6 and 1 in 5 women respectively. Links to the websites in the description, of course. This article from Healthline.com highlights the many issues women face with casual sex today. To quote her article, they aren't swearing off casual sex because they want serious relationships or because they can't handle casual arrangements, which is the prevailing cultural stereotype about women. No, these women are saying they don't enjoy casual sex on a basic level. Continuing on, she says, Since the majority of women don't or can't orgasm from penetrative sex, oral sex can be the key to their pleasure. Unfortunately, every woman I spoke to told me the same thing. The men almost never go down on me, unless I ask for it, and sometimes not even then. The article mentions another study showing that penetrative sex doesn't allow women to climax. It noted that most women reliably experiencing orgasms from masturbation but a much smaller proportion of women getting orgasms from penetrative sex. The abstract of another study highlights that heterosexual men orgasm 95% of the time, compared to heterosexual women at the lowest with only 65% orgasm rate. Women have more risks associated with hookups, and the sex is a lot less enjoyable for them, so we can understand them being a bit careful with dating apps such as Tinder. Adding on the sociosexuality element from earlier, where we know women are more restrictive and less interested in casual sex, we really shouldn't be surprised that men outnumber them on Tinder. Restricted women value personality traits over physical attractiveness. This study shows that most women prefer average levels of masculinity, while only the unrestricted woman would prefer the most attractive masculine-looking figures. To quote the abstract, sociosexuality was related to an increased interest for the more highly masculinized men in the context of short-term dating. Female sociosexuality appears to be related to preferences for higher levels of male masculinization. Looking closer at the app, the layout is perfectly designed to be used for casual sex for people with unrestricted sociosexual orientation. We know that unrestricted people are more likely to favor the physical attractiveness of someone over their personality. The left guy's ramus doesn't have a straight trajectory to pass to the mouth. I've seen videos online of guys openly calling women sluts and whores, telling them that they're ugly, and women absolutely loving it. The hyoid bone is situated under the mandible in the neck area. MGTOWs will tell you that all women care about the attractiveness and the masculinity of a man and completely ignore personality every time. This is only true for unrestricted women. Restricted women value personality traits over physical attractiveness. Women enjoy watching men be masculine. They revel in it. That kind of strength and masculinity can inspire intense sexual attraction. Look how confident he looks now. The next clip I have was actually inside of an incel video because he thought it proved his point regarding women's attraction. I've included it as it actually just confirms the hypotheses we've been over. Here are some women discussing what they find attractive with no fear of judgment. There seems to be some commonalities between what they find attractive. In our experiment, most women chose one of these two guys here as their future husband. But when looking for a one-night stand, they tended to go for this guy here. And there's a good scientific reason for their choice. Why do you find these guys attractive? I like the cheekbones and the jaw. He is definitely like with a strong jawline. The stubble, the eyes, the jaw. Yeah. High cheekbones. He's got a little the bit eyes. darker eyes. I can actually imagine he's quite a uh, false for your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Women find these things attractive because they're all signs of high testosterone, which means that the man is healthy and strong. As we saw, the woman in this video would always choose the most masculine man for the one-night stands. This is their unrestrictive behaviour, as they know it's a short-term relationship. The more restricted woman, however, opted for one of the men in the middle for a boyfriend or a husband. 
This is the equivalent to the restricted woman choosing average male attractiveness from the earlier study we looked at. I just thought I would include it as it backs up what I've said. What women say about attraction can not always be taken as what they personally really feel. The man on the right has a bad gonial angle at around 135 degrees. Notice how the chin width harmonizes with the width of the rest of the jaw. Forward growth of the mandible adds to the face's angularity. Before I start concluding this video, I'd like to share another real life portrayal of the same research we've been discussing. It's a BuzzFeed video interested in what makes a man attractive. I've linked the results to the survey in the description for you, as I'm only providing a brief synopsis of their video. Two different videos of the same man were presented side by side. One clip would portray stereotypically masculine behaviours, while the other would show stereotypically feminine behaviours. Straight women and gay men were asked in studio for a quick reaction to which scenario turned them on more each time. Additional to this, the clips were all put online for a poll of the BuzzFeed audience. These are the percentages I'm about to show you on screen now. I'd also like to note that the results will actually be skewed to the more unrestrictive end, considering there will be gay men in the audience who have been proven to be more sociosexually unrestricted than straight women. See the first study for my proof. we find an overwhelming preferral of the less masculine man for almost all the examples in this video. The women are solely emphasizing on how attractive it is when a man is more feminine. Had no way on the yeah. right. <laughs> I'd rather have like an exact plan and footprint. It just makes you feel like the person cares about you. Shit, I feel like I'm such a slut that if I pick the one on the right. Maybe I'm a flake, I don't know. The, <laughs> the pressure freaked me out. I would fuck the guy on the right. I would probably be in a relationship with a guy on the left. This last clip is the most important to us. The women say they would fuck the masculine dude, but would go out with the more feminine example, as he seemed much more interested in a relationship. This reaffirms the academic consensus regarding the restrictive nature of women to prefer less masculinized men when seeking long-term relationships. Most funny from this clip is when we realize the masculine features are what turns on gay men the most, while turning off heterosexual women. Wow, thanks BuzzFeed for your amazing scientific analysis, woohoo! Women enjoy watching men be masculine. They revel in it. That kind of strength and masculinity can inspire intense sexual attraction. So, what really is Tinder? It is a biased sample pool of the overall population. The layout of the app is perfect for unrestricted people. For women, it's a large pool of unrestricted men where you can choose the most handsome. Unrestricted women tend to prefer the looks of a partner more so than restricted women do. Restricted women have the opposite experience. They value personality more than the physical appearance of a person, which Tinder's features simply doesn't allow for. Most of these girls will not like the app, not take it seriously, use it once a month, or even just uninstall it. Black pill induced depression. For men, a weak jaw usually spells weak masculinity and low attractiveness. The left is more attractive to more women. Mother nature being misandrist, it's fully over for the man on the right. If you're a manlet, you'll never tower over a woman. Now just remember, the majority of women are actually restricted. So you'll find that not many women actually use Tinder. And the women that do use Tinder are the unrestrictive ones who care about attractiveness. Forward growth of the mandible adds to the face's angularity. So only the shallow girls are on Tinder. Looking back at these experiments, it's easy to see where they went wrong. They think it's women's hypergamy, making them seek the most fit man to carry their seed and pass on their DNA. When in reality, it's a set of sociosexual orientation and app features, which selects a biased subset of women to be on the app in the first place. Yes, the women on Tinder we find are shallow, not only because they have more options of men, but because they display unrestricted characteristics and chase the attractive, masculine men for romantic relationships. Any power that confidence and game afforded men has been obliterated by technology. Technology has given women the power to access high and filter low market value men out like never before in human history. Shallowness isn't a men versus women issue, it's a restricted versus unrestricted sociosexual orientation issue. Yes, some women base everything on looks, but more men do it to women. 
and women have to deal with it. Women don't have the self-awareness to understand that their high market value and the emphasis they put on looks are changing dating and society forever. It's perfectly fine to put appearance as the most important feature of a partner. Just don't be surprised when it's reciprocated. This man's face looks like it was built by architects. So women say attractiveness doesn't matter, but in fact, when you evaluate their behavior, it does. If you actually care about a woman's personality, then you should pursue the more restrictive woman, who put more emphasis on personality as well. I saw a woman wearing a shirt, had a happy little face on it. I said, guess what, bitch? There's only two genders. Sociosexual orientation is a huge factor which goes very overlooked by MGTOWs. We do see an imbalance of men to women on Tinder because the majority of women are actually restricted and looks matter a whole lot more for people more interested in hookups. Added onto this is generally how bad the sex is when it's casual or short term with a man. And the additional fear of rape, murder and violence which only further reduces the amount of women on Tinder. Shallow men are blaming women for being shallow while the majority of women actually care more about personality. MGTOWs are doing experiments on an app which mainly exists of unrestricted people looking for other unrestricted people, where attractiveness is the most important feature for unrestricted people. I feel like I'm repeating myself now. Whether it be due to women's nurturing nature, a fear of being seen as shallow, or an evolutionary fear of causing confrontation and thus being vulnerable, what women say is attractive and what women say about attraction can not always be taken as what they personally really feel. They jump from this to only point at women and apply it very generally to all women in the world. This girl was like, um, this, this the other day this girl was like, hey Sam, you're like a really nice guy and uh, I really like what you do, your videos and stuff, do you wanna like, do you wanna hang out sometime? Why, so you can steal all my money, bitch, MGTOW! The studies from earlier show that men are doing the exact same looks-based preferences at a higher rate than women, yet we only seem to point the finger at one gender here. As a species, we want to propagate the best genes and women want to find the best genes that they can to, you know, propagate the species. Please, for the love of God, stop taking Tinder statistics and thinking it reflects on anything in society. Just because you see a correlation on a dating app, don't run with it and don't apply it broadly to all women you might be considered a sexist. Men behave like pussified beaters. In the end, why are MGTOWs mad about other people's preferences and sex lives anyway? Why do you feel the need to police women's sexuality? Here's a hard-hitting fact. You ready? Women are human beings. Let them fuck who they want to fuck. Right, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. You will be swiping through a lot of peanut butter jars. Stay off Tinder. Lots of psycho people that you don't want to meet.